St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force extends a warm invitation to you to be on the beat. Yes, it's on the beat. Mondays, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. on NBC Radio. Get up-to-date information on crime, other police-related issues, and tips on how to better secure yourselves and properties. Join us and share your views on this informative, interesting, and interactive program. On the beat, Mondays, 8 p.m. with the kind courtesy of NBC Radio. Yes, uh, we are marching off the left, right, left, right, and it's uh, three minutes after the 8 o'clock hour. You're listening to NBC Radio, the Song of Nation. And tonight it's Monday night, and once it's Monday night around this time from 8 uh, right up until 9 o'clock, that's the time for the Police on the Beat uh, program. Yes, and you know the Police on the Beat program comes to you under the auspices of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines uh, Police Force, and uh, especially the Public Relations and Complaint Department. That's the department that uh, actually hosts that particular program. And tonight, I'm um, Sergeant Jules Morgan. I'll be hosting the program for tonight. And uh, we have um, in studio here also uh, the wrong table. Uh, is it wrong? Uh, what, what do you call this? Octagon or something like that? Right, okay. <laughs> table. Um, there are three other gentlemen who will be on the program tonight. Uh, Two of them are from the Public Relations and Complaints Department and soon you'll be hearing their voices as full-time hosts as supposed to let me move out. These are the young <laughs> fellas that's moving in. And uh, tonight we have um, the, the traffic chief himself. Uh, should I say chief? No, um, that would be disrespectful to say chief. Eh? <laughs> um, the second man of traffic, soon to be the traffic chief, right? Who will be in, <laughs> who's in also tonight and we're going to be speaking traffic matters tonight. And remember, you know that the program is always interactive. It's an interactive program. We're asking you, once you have that, that query that you need to be answered, the persons are here will help you as much as possible. The number to call is 4572705. That's 4572705. And there's also a Magic Jack number. If you want to call that number, it's 516-350-9891. That's 516 350 9891. That's the Magic Jack number to call to get into the program. And uh, tonight we have um, in studio um, Constable Stapleton and uh, Constable Smith also from the Publi Police Public Relations and Complaints Department. And um, no stranger to the program, he is um, the host sometimes. Inspector Providence of the Traffic Department, and we'll be speaking mostly traffic matters tonight. Good night to you, gentlemen. Good night to you. Um, is this your first time in studio? Um, let, let, let me first start from, from the no, the one say from the bottom. Okay? No. Um, <laughs> we're not careful how we use words these days. Um, on my right, Constable Stapleton. Good night to you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Is this your first time on the, on the program? First time. First well, time. you are from the department that actually host the program most times so maybe in the next um couple of weeks or so you'll be here by yourself along with some guests so you had to prepare yourself for of that of course of course definitely of course. and good night to you constable smith good night st vincent and the Grenadines, and thank you once again for inviting us into your homes as we bring awareness to police issues and issues that affect civilians in and about st vincent and the Grenadines. and good night to you inspector providence well, let me say a pleasant good night to St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the rest of the Eastern Caribbean. Where so my voice is being heard by way of this program. And it is all, all, always indeed a pleasure for me to be on the beat, whether or not I'm in the capacity of the host or whether I'm a guest, it is all, always indeed a pleasure for me to be here. And I'm very hopeful that the program tonight will be very interactive and the information that was, would be disseminated this evening would be of beneficial to St. Vincent and the Grenadines as a whole. And we also, as I said, we want to hear from you where we could, we, could, we, we have gone in, 20, in 2017 already and where we could go, do better in 2018, where we have gone wrong and where we could improve on it. That's what we're really looking forward for tonight. Yes, and um, come right inside. Um, we have um, another member of the traffic department who's also in studio. And that's um, Corporal Corridon. Yes, another uh, traffic chief, a man who is normally you see on the streets every day. That's a big fellow, yeah. Corporal Corridan, <laughs> he's also in the studio. And uh, Corporal Corridan. Yes, as we wait. No little icebreaker is out of the way. 
We're going to be getting down to some serious business uh, right about now. Serious business. Yes, as the corporal um, adjusts himself for, for the studio. Corporal Carradine, good night to you, sir. Yes, pleasant good night to you, my uh, sergeant, um, and the listener, public persons that are in hearing of my voice. Catch your breath, catch your breath. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I ran towards the station because I was a bit late. Ran towards the station very careful. <laughs> no, um, you lose a 15 pounds, I could say. That anyway. <laughs> yes, I'm St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and wherever we've been heard in the rest of diaspora, tonight we're going to be speaking mostly traffic matters. But if there's anything that you, you want to call and ask, we will try as much as possible to accommodate you. If we can't, we'll make sure that we have the information checked out and uh, maybe next Monday, then that particular subject can be dealt with. Um, Inspector Providence, you're here tonight and it's traffic. What exactly are we, are we going to be speaking about tonight when it comes to traffic? Because I myself have, have a couple questions and, and, um, and concerns, but um, we can start the ball rolling. Well, generally, what we want to look at in regards to traffic, I know traffic is a very, very wide is issue in regards to when the general public calls in and, 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 and traffic matters. It's very wide. But generally, what we want to, to look at is, is sort of a postmortem where the department would have um, been successful for 2017, where we could, uh, could, uh, could have done better in 2017, what our plans are for 2018. And we want the general public and a, and a whole to assist us in, 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 in executing some of these plans and projects that we have on board. We want the general public and a whole to be um, critical in a sense, yes, um, objectively as, it, as, as you can, but critical nevertheless, so that we, 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 we would know where we have gone wrong and where we could improve in 2018. So that's basically what we want to look at um, on the program tonight. I have a sort of a post-mortem for 2017 and what are our plans and projects for 2018. In, in respect of um, 2017, I know at one time there was a drive to have um, those derelict vehicles moved. I think the solid waste management unit would have been spearheading that particular effort. I, I can say um, there are some places where I've seen some improvements. There are others where <laughs> I don't know if, if um, somebody tried to circumvent the system because what they actually did is that... Um, they would have taken the vehicles maybe from the side road and they push it into maybe a, a, a parking lot nearby uh, some side bushes or whatever. Um, how are we really getting with that particular program? Well, as you say quite, quite rightly, the, the traffic department was in collaboration with the solid waste unit, uh, also also with the Ministry of Health in having the derelict move, derelict vehicles move from the streets of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It is an ongoing effort. It is still being um, done as, as we speak. Um, nevertheless, we have not started yet for 2018, but the program is still ongoing. We are uh, scheduled to have a meeting very soon to to look back at 2017, where we what we have done and where we, we can improve in 2018 as well as to start the program for 2018 going I know a number of persons would be sitting and, and, and wondering what, what, what was happening in regards to this very issue. But I just want to assure the general public and a whole that the police, the, the Ministry of, of Health and the Solid Waste Management Units, we have not forgot our plans and our program that we started in 2017. And we intend, as I said earlier in, in a program, that we are going to clean the whole of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, all the street the length and breadth of St. Vincent and the Grenadines from the, the very issue of derelict vehicles. It is not, not only very unsightly, but it is unhealthy. And we, if we recognize what is happening presently, we have seen a number of cruise ships that have been coming into St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Almost every day there is a cruise ship into St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Yeah. And if we are going to be very serious about the whole issue of tourism, we, we need to, to get the streets of St. Vincent and the Grenadines very clean and we need we, some person might say then we need to start with capital yeah. kingston but nevertheless Which we need we, we need to have have it done and it might be small effort but we, we need to get the small things right for us and when we get the small one right for that we could go ahead and get the big ones done but um it's an ongoing process as i said in regards to derelict vehicles so don't believe that the police started something and then we stopped that is not the case we have not 
started the program for 2018 as yet. But as I said earlier, we have we are proposing a meeting very soon. Sometime in next week, proposing to have a meeting. All the, the agencies, that is police, the, the Ministry of of Health, and also the Solid Waste Management Unit. And once once we have that meeting um, out of the way, you can expect to see the police and the Solid Waste Management Unit, Ministry of Health, coming again and having these vehicles removed. I, I hope so too, because um, as I said, it was a it was a welcome move because um, there are some places that really and truly those vehicles were a nuisance in terms of um, traffic. But what I saw happened is that person just took them from the road itself and placed them in vacant areas just nearby. And it's causing a health hazard at present. So, so they, they move the problem from one area from, and put them to another area. area. Well, this is something that we'll have to, to look at. Um, the law, as it stands, gives the police authority to serve a notice of removal on persons. And if you're moving from point A to point B, yes, you may have moved the vehicle, but if there's something in the line regards to that as well, and you could expect us at the traffic department to be very forceful this year again in regards to to this very issue. So you could expect Corporal Corridan and his team, the traffic department, and the, the men at the traffic department to be out again very early this year in, in regards to derelict vehicles. I know it's a very burning issue and we still have calls from time to time persons reporting these issues. And from some areas we are seeing where some were, were removed, persons are uh, wanted to put back these very um, like vehicles in this. And that's something that we have to be mindful of. We have to look very carefully as, as we, we, we move on with, with, with this campaign. Yes. Couple Corridan, I know you are on the road on, on a daily basis. And um, what, for 2017, looking back, what are some of the most uh, trying problems that you had in respect of, of being on the roads? Well, 2017, uh, one of the, the problems that we was at Richmond Hill Public Road where we placed some road signs. In terms of um, the new U-turn, there, there, there was a hazard being created by motorists at Richmond Hill where they will come into Kingston and for some reason they forgot something. <laughs> just turn around and move on. <laughs> I love that one. I love that one. Beautiful. Yeah. And the turn around in the road and it, it creates danger for motorists and pedestrians. Um, since we have placed road signs and we, 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 we have seen improvements in these drivers. Um, there are also some areas like trenches where persons will go into trenches road and they will exit without even waiting for right away to do so, creating danger for other motorists. We have also curbed that situation by placing a no-entry sign between the peak hours. Um, also, we were faced with the challenge of, of resources, meaning um, manpower to deal with the, the, the motorists and evenings and on mornings in the peak time. Um, last year, we didn't have um, a drive, a check, a check drive, meaning we went out on traffic duties in the countryside, in the town, in the Grenadines. We, we could not have done that because of la lack of manpower. Um, those are some of the challenges that we had last year. Now, I heard you said um, the U-turns that were placed in those areas. Is, is there only for the peak times? So you're no. saying that? It is a, a, a that you turn is for any time in the day. Once once you get in that area and you make a U turn, you, you can book it ashore. You will be prosecuted. You know, that is something that um, a lot of persons, including myself, who would have taken vans coming from especially Calico area coming down. And when persons reach there, they turn him back and tell you, hey, I'm not going any further. Now, in terms of fear, if I decide, hey, man, I'm not going to pay because I've seen something in St. Vincent that happens, I've never seen in other countries, eh? where drivers don't know the difference between a bus terminal and a bus stop. I know terminal, the word terminal, comes from the word terminate. So that means this is where you end the services. That's so right. it becomes a bus terminal. It terminates the services there. 
But bus stops in St. Vincent, some places has become bus terminals. So if I'm supposed to go to Little Tokyo, which is almost another mile down the road, and you're leaving me up there at um, Peace Moon, and I say, hey, man, I'm not going to pay the fare. Have I any rights not to pay that fee? Right. Well, all our, we have on our, all our books still the, the charge of fail to proceed to your destination. If you exit an omnibus, you, you... Matter of fact, if and from the moment a passenger enters an omnibus, he enters a contract with that omnibus mm -hmm. driver, mm -hmm. which means they have to, and they are compelled to take you to your final destination, which may be Little Tokyo our bus terminal failing to do so you are not compelled to pay a fare because he did not carry you to your destination mm -hmm. however if you see it fit to pay that driver you can come to the station and make a, a formal report and we will investigate and whatever the outcome will be you know most likely that driver will be prosecuted so, so, so so it's, it's, is it is it possible that um, maybe one dollar can cost him an extra um, seventy nine? <laughs> Seven, that's correct. <laughs> I just want to add one thing in um, to what Corporal Corridor said in regards to that, and I I'm in support of what he said in regards to problem that we have we are facing in regards to this very issue, and it boils back all again to the whole issue of the transport board, whether or not the transport board is effective. Because as it stands right now, if I choose to drive my bus at Georgetown and then tomorrow I choose to go at Calico, there's nothing in the law which prevents me from doing that. Couple Corden said about the, and he, sp he spoke about the issue of the bus going towards the destination. But as it stands again, our buses in St. Vincent and are not rooted. Yes. Because, and, and because they are not rooted, we have a problem in, in regards to getting them go to their destination. Where is the destination? Mm. Oh. Right? That is not that is not incorporated in the law. So if I decide to turn back at at Peace Mo, when I enter that bus, whether or not the, the contract was breached, whether I, I, I thought okay, yes we are going and if the bus driver said to you, Yes, I am going to um to Tom. to to, 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 to Tokyo. Okay. That, that that's that's a different thing. Mm -hmm. But if if there was not a verbal contract to say Okay, I'm going to the bus terminal. Or I'm, I'm going to stay at, at Peace Mo. Then it, it all boils into the legality again as to whether or not he would have breached the contract between him and the commuter. Okay. So, right so, so there's a loophole. Yeah, so there's a thing that we, have to, we, 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 we are burdened with, and there's a thing that we have to look at. And again, there needs to be the, the chance, both board itself needs to be, to, to be revamped in a sense, to have, to have it done properly. And we did it in the 21st century, and, and it, it is difficult for us to still understand why you are a conductor today and tomorrow you're driving you're a bus with 18 bus. passengers. So it's difficult, again. It is yeah, difficult right. for us to, for, for you to be driving at your bus at Kaliakwa today. And because there are persons who are going at Georgetown, yeah. you forget about your commuters, your, your regular traveling passengers that, that travel with you daily, that That's goes right. to Kaliakwa. And then you go to, to Georgetown. Georgetown. These, are, oh, these, these are some of the, the, the simple things that we need to get right. And if we, if we can get these right firstly, we will still always have this problem existing. And, and I said the, the, the Transport Board needs to really look at these, some of these issues. I know the Transport Board um, is made up of the Commission of Police, the Chief Engineer, and um, I think it's five other persons that are appointed by the Governor General. And that's the Transport Board. Whether they are, they are in existence or they, they meet regularly, I don't know. But there needs to be some, some input something put in place seriously to deal with these issues with omnibuses and, and that is why we are seeing a lot of the doggy dog system oh. with the omnibuses because they are not routed they are not properly placed and 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 we will continue to see this happening until until some of these elements are, are, are removed but inspector i, I want to believe that um the fact there's been a talk of a new traffic act to be implemented maybe soon i've been hearing the word soon I would have thought that all these matters would have already been ironed out. Well, well, well the thing is, you know, the, the board is set up, the transport board is set up to deal with these issues. It just means that, that the board has to meet and, and put these things in place. All you have to do is, is probably 
pass it over to to cabinet so they could make legislation on them. But the boards, the board itself, the transport board will have to meet and 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 make these necessary changes. Whether they're going to write up to the attorney general or, or the cabinet or parliament to have have legislation in regards to them. But if, if they do not meet regularly, then that, that's a serious issue. Now, there are a couple of things that Parsons has been concerned about over the years. It has been a little headache for, for Parsons. One, what is additional lights? Well, well we at the department, and, and, and Corporal Cardinal will be able to this, that okay. we do not, in a sense, tell Parsons additional lights. In, in 2018, oh. what is additional lights? Because, be, because the law itself, mm. the law never speaks about additional lights. This is, the law speaks of other lighted lamps, right? So, because the thing is this, if you bring your vehicle into St. Vincent and again and with, with four lights in the bumper, those are not additional yeah. lights. Definitely, they, they but if they are lighted, mm -hmm. there are other lighted lamps other than headlamps and the side lights. So, so what's the, the purpose of them? <laughs> the law is saying, what are not the purpose? The purpose is, is, is to eliminate and, 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 see, and see, yeah. see ahead. Mm -hmm. But what the law is saying in regards to this is that the law is not saying that you cannot use them, you know. What the law is saying that if you're going to use them, then you must seek a written permission from the Commission of Police. Um. So, so, <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. There's nothing in law to say additional light. Inspector, let's Other take devil's advocates here. Lamp. Now, those laws, were, were made, which year um, they might have been? Well, let me put it this way. <laughs> Our law was, re was, was revised no. in 2009. Reprinted. Well, there's a new edition which says revised edition okay. of 2009. Reprinted edition of 2009. <laughs> <laughs> now, back in, back in the days when, when the laws were made, we had, we had vehicles where there was only some, some two big spot lamps here. Now, these modern vehicles are being made like that. And 99% of the vehicles that comes, come to those. So that means everybody has to write to the commission of police to get permission to use those lights. Yes, and, and, and we, okay. under, we, understand, we understand what is taking place. And, and, and yes, and, and I mean, so proud of you that, that there, may, there be, may be a need for, 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 for the um, legislation to come up to date especially as to what is happening, uh, yeah. especially with these lights. But, but you see, the police, in a sense, we have to work within the framework of the law. When the law gives us the authority to act, then we can act. We cannot work or act outside the ambit of the law. And once the piece of legislation that we are speaking of about is still on the books reprinted oh. right we have to still police it because it's our duty until that it is, it is changed yeah, but yes i'm in support of you that that there may be needs to be some changes in regards to to this very piece of legislation because we're seeing hundred thousands of vehicles it's being imported in into this in country yeah. like this and they are coming straight from the manufacturer oh, definitely but but there are instances also um i'm sorry Morgan, where we are seeing persons putting on other lights Right and and last um, just tonight I was coming into Kingston and I, I spotted one just in Richmond Hill, and it has this very long fluorescent lamp fluorescent to the front. The front yeah. Right, yeah. these are who we are really targeting those in a sense. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, those are those did not come from the manufacturer yeah. like that, and those are very dangerous, especially those long fluorescent ones to the to the oncoming traffic. And persons must understand the, the danger that these lights pose to to the oncoming traffic. Sometimes persons, and we have had reports of that persons just cannot see. They just have to stop their vehicle and just allow them to pass. And and, right? and, and, and and another thing now again, speaking about lights and those fluorescent ones, persons have been having, even myself too, have an issue with persons, especially minibuses. Especially the minibuses with the white indicator lights during the daytime. I'm driving behind a vehicle. You have a white indicator light in the day, hot sunny day. Sometimes it's by accident. Sometimes you realize that the person actually indicated to go somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. They're using white indicator lights. One. And another thing I see that the minibus drivers are doing. They pull off on the left. But although they pull on the left and stop letting all passengers are taking passengers, their right indicators yeah. on all the time. <laughs> so is there anything that can be done about those white indicator lights and minibuses? Well, let me put it this way. Is it way. legal? It is legal. Okay. Because it, it, as, as it stands in regards to indicator lights, the law does not say what color they should be. For instance, the, the, it would say that your, your headlamps should be uncolored. You say, uh, you say your, 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 your park light should be of a, of a, of a, a certain color. But the, the law does not speak as to the color of, the of indicator lights. So, and, and it brings me back to the point that, 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 that our law needs to be upgraded. 
And as you said, some of these laws were, 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 were from 1940 something ago. And uh, when there was one would bus in St. Vincent and the and and, and <laughs> if if the police is seriously going to going to deal with with these traffic issues and traffic violations for 2018 and beyond, there has to be the legislation to go with these to 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 assist the police to deal with these issues of of um, lights and and other stuff because what we are seeing, posters are implementing and and getting new ideas every day, mm. and when they they've come up with these new ideas, there's nothing in the law that prevent them from doing so. And then the police is left in a position where he cannot act because he doesn't have the backing of the law itself. So these are things that we have to look look at from a, from a departmental level as we try to move forward from 2018 and beyond. Um, two other things that has been issues also to persons. One, does every conductor has to have the conductor's license? And the next thing, the most provoking music. And what exactly is loud music in a minibus? Just um, just take a point on that. Um, I see there's a caller online. Um, we're going to go straight to the lines. Good night, caller. Welcome to the Police on the Beat program. Good night to you, caller. Welcome to the Police on the Beat program. Uh, good, good night. Um, good night to the panelists. Yes, good night yes, to sir, you, sir. Good night. Good night, good night. Um, listen, huh? listen, my um, stop on, on my bus, right? Well, there's no bus stop. The... They have to pay eighty dollars, right? Correct. Right? I'm, yes, I'm. I'm. We're in agreement with that. Yes. Yes, that is on pay. The driver. <laughs> they should amend the the law this way, right? Eighty dollars. The driver pay twenty dollars. The conductor pay twenty dollars, <laughs> and the passenger pay forty dollars. If it's the passenger, they pay twenty dollars each. But, but um, Carla, I I can agree with you now, but I think the conductor pay seventy nine. <laughs> because most times the conductor stop in the bus and not the driver. Yeah. It, the conductor deals with the remote for the music. He yeah. deals with the pause and he says, if you have a remote also for the engine. Yeah. But I do, I do agree with you. Yeah. Like he's a conductor as well. <laughs> uh, Carlos, so that's it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you very much for your contribution. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I just want to say what you to the caller that. Yes, we understand the point that he's trying to get across in regards to who should pay the fine and, and, and so forth. But we have to also understand that when you drive off the omnibus, that you're in charge. So if, if the conductor say to you, take one here and there's not a bus stop, the onus is on you to, to, to decide whether or not you're going to stop there. Because at the end of the day, when you stop and you're, and you're, and you're caught, is you gonna get penalized? It makes me wonder <laughs> sometimes because most times I've seen those things happen, and ninety nine percent of the time is really the conductor. That, it seems like if he has a remote that actually stops the engine, because as soon as he does something, automatically the bus stop, the driver stop, and then that's it. But, but you see, the conductor has has his duty there is to, for instance, pack the bus. That his that's his rule, and maybe pick up the fares and so forth. But the law does not say that he. There's any legal implications for him if the bus stop where there's not a bus stop. However, there are legal implications for the when driver, the driver if he stops where there's not a bus stop. So bearing that in mind, the driver has to be smarter than the conductor now to say, you know what? If I stop here, if I stop here, I'm going to get a ticket. If 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 I stop here, nothing going to be done to you. The conductor even have an indicator. He puts out <laughs> his hand, <laughs> and he, you guys. We have another caller on the beat program. And good night to you, caller. Welcome to the police on the beat program. The lines are flashing. Good night to you, caller. Welcome to the police on the beat program. Um, person seems to be online but not seeing anything. Hello? Yes, good night to you, sir. You're live on here? You're hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you. You're live on here. Oh, okay, okay. I called to make a complaint about a piece of road. Hello, is, um, are, you, are you somewhere where, where the wind is blowing into the phone? Huh? The wind seems to be blowing into the phone. That is causing yeah, a, a feedback. I don't know why. Yeah, it's, it's really causing a problem with the air. I'm talking about this piece of road on the video highway from Belmont to Creek Corner. You hearing it? You hearing yes, it? I'm hearing you. Oh, we're hearing okay. You. Next month will be two years since that piece of road was finished. It dug up 
and they, they pass it and all kind of thing. But that is not my problem. My problem is the use of the roundabout as a car. Hello? Yes, yes sir, we are hearing you. We are hearing you. Use of the roundabout as a car. Saturday night, I nearly get right off there with my vehicle. I come in down. And there were four vehicles coming from Mexico. And I fell out a white. I don't know if it's as good or a side to tell what. He decided to show a cut. He overstayed three vehicles that was in front of him. Come on, my hand, I come in down. When he behold me, and it, it was drizzling, rain was, was, was coming. He had to run out, you know, these little flat areas on the ground there. Yes. He had to go on them to hmm. save me. Hmm. I've complained time and time to the traffic department about getting this road marked. I was told that that is Braxa problem. And it's not until somebody gets injured eh, or seriously mash up the vehicle with, with someone who decides to overtake, something would be done to it. That, um, the, 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 the acting commissioner now, I spoke to him, he told me he was a victim of the same thing, he was coming from Mexico. And when he, when he looked, the vehicle that was behind him, was in front of him when he go wrong the, 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 the old where the old bus said is vehicle in front of he gone short cut he and he, he, he done gone something need to be done with that piece of road in the roundabout there it's it's causing problems when the minivan when they come from town they're not going down by the where they with the daily shed they staying in that area there and that is a narrow area you have to wait behind them they have a big area to go and park up to drop off the passenger, they're not using it. Some Sunday I saw, I saw they're using it for, for, for vehicles, people using it for night time, partying. That's what I see they're using it to do. It wasn't made for that. It's time for something to be done at Creek Corner. Okay? Yeah, thank you very much, Carlo. Thank you very much. And I know for sure that that matter will be looked into. All right. I think maybe those triangles are too low. Yeah, and but it's two it's triangles there and on the road. Um, we, we have had reports before in regards to the use of that roundabout, and it, it doesn't really say a lot about us as 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 citizens, as as as, as you know, motorists on a whole. That in the absence of a police officer, and 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 persons are, are really taking and taking advantage of this situation because the police officer is not present in that area. Because we find from time to time persons also will try this even in roundabout in Annisville. And and this is this is an area where we have signs and so forth, but it all boils down to our mentality as as as, as Vincent and, and, as, and as motorists that we 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 have this slavish mentality still that if the police is not there, what we 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 do as we please, and and this is really does not say much. Right, Inspector, um, yes, we have uh, two more callers online. Um, good night, uh, caller. Welcome to the Police on the Beat program. Yeah, good night. Welcome to the Police on the Beat program. You're live on here. Yes, good night to you. No, it is concerning this road that coming from Georgetown when you leave this stretch to take that corner by Dali, by where the bridge was. No. For this longest while, when drivers come from areas outside of our community, traveling down that stretch, when they get to the corner, they tend to head straight to the river. <laughs> yes, I, <laughs> uh, I passed it today. Hello? <laughs> I passed it today. I saw about four bins there, eh? red and white. For the longest while, do I believe if the, the police will mark that road center wrong, drivers are going to see that white line and follow that line around instead of heading straight to the river. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Caller, thank you very much for that. Okay, boy. Yeah, thank you very much for the contribution, and um, Inspector. I, I, well, well, I guess it's something yeah. that the the, the the department will have to look, to look into. I mean, we are responsible for for the um, traffic throughout the state of Saint Vincent and the Grenadines. Nevertheless, we we would love sometime if we could have the support of of the persons from the up district, you know, to to sort of uh, lessen our load, because it is very difficult for the traffic department to alone to police the whole of Saint Vincent and the Grenadines with Definitely. the limited man with, um, human resources that we have. But nevertheless, we, we will look into it, and um, I'm certain that something will be done in the near future. Yes, uh, we have another call online. Yes, good night to you, caller. Welcome to the Police on the Beat program. Uh, good night to you. You're live on air. Hello, good night. Yes, good night to you. You're live on air. 
My concern is that um, across by St. Mary's RC School, that is a school zone, and it's usually very congested. I think it should be a no parking and no waiting area right outside the school area. That road is very narrow, mm -hmm. and vehicles come from all over just to avoid going into a parking lot to pay. They park all outside of the school area. And sometimes you're walking there and you turn up and pass. Vehicles are coming up behind you. They're tooting you, tooting you. And even today I was walking across there. There were some tourists passing. And finally, the time there's a vehicle behind them tooting and things like that. And I, I think it's really dangerous, especially after school, when the children are outside waiting for their parents. You know, they're between cars and around cars. And, you know, I, I think that area needs to be looked into by the traffic department, and something needs to be done about it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carlo. Thanks for your contribution. A couple, Carradine? <clears throat> well, from time to time, that has been an a issue that has been arising over and over. But we have to also be mindful that that area is a area used by persons that are that may attend church from time to time. They might not want to attend um, morning mass because of the Roman Catholic Church in that area. And for us to go and put a, a no, in, no, part, no parking or waiting sign in that area, we are telling the persons that are going to attend church they can't park where they're accustomed to park. So it's something that we have to discuss at our office and discuss with, 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 the, with the church persons there. But it, it's also something that we are also debating at our office um, because we have to also look at the children that are attending school at the RC primary school there. Um, we, we also put um, speed bumps in place last year, I believe, Inspector, last year, to reduce the speed of vehicle in that area, vehicle traffic in that area, because children tend to run through these parked vehicles and into the into mm -hmm. the path of these moving vehicles. So we have placed speed bumps in that area to slow down these motorists. And Corporal, now that um, we are in the area of, of parking, I think I spoke to Inspector Providence and a couple of the persons in traffic about it. Something, uh, there's an area that has been, for me, a serious concern and a lot of persons. Now, in front of Westside Bar, just after the cemetery, going up to into Edinburgh, just before reaching Nine Steps. There's the, the bar on the other side and there's a place that do well in there. That area, constantly, during the day, during the night, vehicles are constantly being parked just in front of the bar area. And that causes a serious problem for traffic because that, to the end of the day now, when you're coming from the Edinburgh way, is a corner that you can't see. It's a blind corner. So once a vehicle is parked on that side, automatically you can't see around the corner. So when you try to come over on that lane, the oncoming traffic comes around the corner immediately onto you. If it's nighttime, you might be able to see a light. But during the daytime, you can't see anything. And it's up to last night, I was listening to another radio station and I heard the announcer who lives in the Edinburgh area complaining about the same thing. Okay. You know what I mean? And I, I'm saying, I, I don't know if something can be done about getting a no parking sign right in front of that because a lot of people have been complaining and several times I can tell you because I'm working in that area now that it has been a problem. Vehicles are parked right at the bar and making it one lane, and then you can't see around that blind corner when you come from, um, I think there's a preschool just, just around there, from yeah. the cemetery. That itself is a problem. Yeah. Uh, another, is there a call online? Yes, there's another call online. Um, good night, caller. Welcome to the Police on the Beat program. Yes, good evening, gentlemen. Yes, good, good evening to you. Yes, okay, I'm enjoying the um, program. Now, I have a suggestion for you, um, officer. And especially if the senior officer is there, in inspector. Yes. Um, I would like to suggest that somebody brought up the incident, the story of the St. Mary's Arsenal School and the Catholic Church. A lot of the, a lot of the times, the police put down no parking, right? And a suggestion that I am making, especially at that school, right where the the children are being let let off, 
to go into the school and where the principal entrance is, I would like to suggest to the traffic department that they put a, a no stopping, um, like a square from the entrance to the principal to the entrance of the, the school there where the children are being let off, that they X out that portion, a clear vision, and put no stopping. Um, it's, it's a habit now that when you let off your children, you stay outside of the vehicles that are parked there. So as we drive along to let off our children, we line up one behind the other, we leave off our children, and nobody is allowed to, to go on the left side and, and park. So you have that clear um, portion of road from the principal entrance to the entrance of the school, um, you put no stopping, not even waiting, no stopping. You stay outside the sign. And that's a suggestion for you, Inspector. You could look at that and see if that would help. In instances where the motorists, the traveling prop, the motorists will not park the vehicles there, thus hindering the children from seeing what vehicles are approaching as they exit from these two entrances to the school. Um, that's one. The other thing I would like you to look into, Inspector, the... Um, I, I don't know if you could speak on the topic of horns. Yes. I noticed that within recent times now, at 6 o'clock, uh, 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 peak hours, there's, a, there's so many horns being blown around the place. <laughs> I am saying if I am catching a bus, I see the bus coming. Why do I have to be honking my horn as though it's a wedding and all this stuff? And I'm telling you, it, it's getting worse than the music on the, the, the omnibuses. And I know I think I saw that there's an offense relating to horn. And, I mean, I know if you're blowing your horn to a lot someone, but not to... Well, when I say a lot, like another a driver or some obstacle in the road, but not to be honking your horn from all the way up at the library, all the way down to um, um, Peace, they call it place, the Frenches. Same going down to all the buses. I think we need to look at that. It's getting overbearing. And soon, it's going to get out of control, just like in here. Gentlemen, I will listen off air. You could comment on that and comment. Tell me what you think about the suggestion of the, the no stopping at the school. Yeah, thank Carla, you. thank you very much for your suggestion. And you have a good night. Well, well, well let me just say, um, the, the, the very first point that you made is, is a very welcoming one. And That's I think good. that um, just... Thinking about it, 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 it seems yeah. to be a very good idea. From the right up to the, the, the short steps. Yeah, beca the because steps what will be happening, that, that, that area where the children would be usually occupying, that, that will be left vacant. And then probably forward up the road, then uh, buses could be able to stop and park. And so so the first suggestion I made I, is a very welcoming one, and I want to thank you very much for that suggestion. Um, in regards to the second point you made in, in respect of horns, yes, there's an offense in regards to persons using the horn they say that the law is quite clear that again that you should not be use, using your horn for the purpose of calling passengers so um that is an offense for you if you just be, and we have prosecuted persons in the past we continue to prosecute persons for this very offense and the, the, the law is also quite clear that where it says that the, your horn should be one that is certified by the licensing authority who is the commission of police so all those horns that sometimes we hear from time to some of them are not are not certified but the problem that we have sometimes is that when you stop that vehicle you you the officer sometimes find difficulty to find, it. To find the horn <laughs> 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 so we have had is instance in the past where we have we have pulled some of these vehicles into the into the into the station and and we, we have difficulty locating where these guys find <laughs> locate uh, put these horns but, but nevertheless, I want to thank you again for that, that point that you made. And, and, and yes, we understand what is happening in regards to that. And we will continue to be very vigilant, very proactive in regards to this very issue. So you can expect the traffic police to be very vigilant again for 2018 in regards to this, this, this horn issue. It, it, it is becoming a very problematic one as well. And we want to nip it in the bud before it gets worse. Two, two other issues that persons have been concerned about. One... I see it happens, I've been seeing it happening over the years, and especially in one, one, one area. The, the redemption shops to Kingston in the bus terminal route and, and back. You, you travel in a van full of passengers. You see the van pull up at, at a shop. Okay, you say maybe you can get some change. You see the conductor runs out, they say, all right, you can change some money. 
Next thing is he comes back again in South Bay. He gives the driver one, and he has one, and that's how they operate. And the vans, and I, I travel the whole of St. Vincent and The vans, I will say now, that I see as the major, major offenders are the vans that travel redemption shops back into Kingston. That seems to be a regular habit these days of those buses. Driver, drink, conduct the drink. And that's how it is all the time. We have another call in line. Um, good night, caller. Welcome to the Police on the Beat program. Good night, boss. Good yes, night. good night, sir. That is the same thing I just came to call and tell you about. <laughs> uh, hit their money right now. I just want to with them when they drink and drive. And I'll, I'll, I must pull them up, man. De definitely that will be done. Yes, it happens too often, really. It, it's, it's, it's an everyday occurrence. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, yes so that is one of the issues that, um, you know, mean, and, and drivers drinking and the conduct. And I see sometimes persons that they're afraid to even make a complaint about it. Hmm. Another problem we find again is the buses traveling at Lee Hall back down the road with the music. They have been spoken to on more than one occasion, and it seems like if um, I don't know what, if they, they really care about it or not. But especially going to the school zones, and that's it's it's when it's about loud, it's real loud. Okay, um, well, let me just say something in regards to the, the first issue in regards to drinking and driving, and, and again, that is why we we are calling for the, the implementation of the necessary legislation to deal with these issues, because as it stands now, the law is saying that. You should not be under the influence of drug or alcohol, and that goes for the driver and the conductor. But if you take a beer and drink, or you are seen with a bottle of beer in your hand, the police has to prove at the end that you are under yeah. the influence, influence of a drug yeah. or yeah. alcohol, yeah. 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 right? And that impairs your judgment and so forth. Yeah. As it stands, the police will have to take that individual to the doctor, the doctor and he will have to seek his permission. <laughs> to have his blood drawn and then tested to see whether or not he was under the influence or he was over the, the limit and so forth. And that's the issue, a very serious issue that the police is facing. That is why it is important that we have legislation put in place to deal with the is these issues. And we have been hearing from time and time again, years upon years ago, about the implementation of the New Traffic Act. And, and, and incorporated yeah. in this act, we, we are hoping to find that breathalyzers would be but it will put him. As a matter of fact, I have seen a draft, and, and it is inside of the draft. But we need to see the act itself yeah. come on stream. We have been waiting for the longest while. We are hoping that it would have been implemented last year. That did not materialize. And again, we have seen where a new committee has been formed to deal with this. It again um, last year, late last year. And we're really hoping that before the end of this year, that we will see the implementation of these legislation to deal with drinking and driving and, and to deal with speeding and, and, and all these sort of things that, that will really help the traffic department, the police on a whole, not just the traffic department because we are hopeful that we could see persons in the out district also having breathalyzers and, and to test. Even if the, 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 traffic and, the traffic man and patrol, the, the, the RRU or the Rapid Response Unit and patrol, and they could have probably a breathalyzer in the vehicle and they are patrol to meet certain posts and they could test them and see whether or not they were not And this is what we, we are looking for. This is the way we have to go. And um, if we're going to remain as it stands, we will always have these difficulties facing us. Right? Definitely, because for you to give a person a, a DUI offence, you have to have the breathalyzer. Right. And you know, his alcoholic level has, has to be to a certain level. Right. And the same thing goes again. That's why we're having those problems again with music. Now, persons have been saying, okay, then... Um, how am I going to know whether or not this music is loud at this music at whose discretion? Yes, yes. Because um, when it comes to music, there must be a decibel level. So if um, you have a, de a decibel meter and you say that the law says it must not be over three decibels, and when you clock the person, he's four, then there's no way around that. Right, but, but, but in the absence well, of that, how, how do we say But, but the thing is this, loud that music? the law does not say anything about well, loud music. music. Yeah. It speaks about musical instruments. No, and Regulation 31 of the Traffic Act states that no musical instrument, no noisy instrument, all loudspeakers should be used or operated 
in any motor vehicle except on the written permission of the commission of police. So even though your music is, is, at, is at stage one and you do not have permission, the police could prosecute you. The Come. problem that we have, <laughs> Sergeant, <laughs> <laughs> the problem that we have is that, as I said, you know, we were prosecuting persons for this offense until one brilliant lawyer come and say, well, hey, what they lost, the law does not define what is a musical instrument. As far as concerned, a musical instrument is a guitar. Mm. Right? So he made a new case, a new case submission in the court that the law does not define what is a musical instrument. Every other offense after that, yeah, in respect of musical instrument, when the police charge, yeah, once the police is not guilty, it is shown out of the court. Yeah. So it makes absolutely no sense for the police now to go ahead and charge without the interpretation as well. So that's what I'm saying. Meter. There has to be a decibel meter. It's at a level at for me, three decibels is, is the limit. And then if you're clocked over that, then... But, but, but the thing is this. Mm. You, you could be at the central station and hear a man coming down yeah. at South Road with music on. When by the reach, time you reach a central down, station uh, and you, you test it, it's yeah. it within the limit. That's how it is. So, so that's why you're <laughs> not saying loud or anything <laughs> like that. Do we have another caller line? Good night to you, caller. Welcome to the Police and Debate Program. Yes, good night to you, caller. You're live on air? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir, you're live on air? Yeah. Yes, we're hearing you. We're hearing you. The, um, the phone, the modem I drive and, and phone too. Yeah. Yes, that, that's um, definitely, um, yeah. in, Inspector. I, I think there's something to do with that also. Driving and phoning. Are they phoning or they and driving still? <laughs> Well, well uh, as I said, there's nothing in the law to deal with, with drink, driving and, and using a cellular phone. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's something that, that, that is again something that we, we had and we, we were hearing for the longest well that would be also be incorporated. And, and some in of them one thing we saw no place, they must take off their seat belt. <laughs> 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 that, that, that's, thank you very much, caller. Thank you very much for your contribution. Um, and yeah. Inspector, that is what I, I said also. Is there another call in line? Good night, caller. Welcome to the Police and the Beat program. Good night, officers, and how are you? Yes, we, good we are good sir. for the time being. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, sir. Yes, concerning the, the loud music, while there is nothing to measure to date, to my mind, uh, uh, seeing that there are plans to draft, to have new drafts or new legislations and what have you, I think if there's some specifics included, and for example, I mean this, that as you made mention earlier about contract, when a passenger enters a transport vehicle, public transport, so to speak, does the contract say that the passenger should have music? I think that some specifics should be included in the law to come, because as far as I am concerned, when I enter a public transport, I am paying to I am paying a fee to be transported from point A to point B, and whatever that fee is, I am prepared to pay that fee. I am not paying for music, and the law needs to be specific. And to my mind, if, 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 if it goes along that line and that uh, rational, I think this will help to eliminate some of the uh, problems or the whole, all of the problems perhaps where the loud music is concerned. Because if I want music or when I want music, I know where to get music. I don't have to enter public transport to get music. <laughs> you know, I'm paying to go from point A to point B, and that needs to be specified in the law. Well, maybe, caller, um, as I said, the, the, the new act should be drafted soon, and and the inspector just said cell phones are not included, uh, has not been included in terms of the driving. I know for surety, if we had a revised edition in 2009, cell phones was before that. So it means that I was correct in saying reprinted. <laughs> so, 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 so most likely, caller, yeah, I know for surety for, for this new act that is coming up, uh -huh. that everything that persons have been complaining about for the past few years, yeah, and those tonight, will be in it. 
I, I hope so, be, 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 because I have traveled to other countries. I never had that problem. I went to Trinidad. I would travel from Port of Spain to San Fernando, in the big buses, the maxi taxis. I pay my fee. I have no problem with music, as the case may be. What happened? I, I, the driver say, uh, um... If you go to Jamaica, we had the same kind of style there, but um, I think we're a copycat country. They had that, but it's yeah. no longer in Jamaica as far as yeah. the yeah. they had, It had it at one time, but I think the government um, stepped up on it. But for our drivers and conductors are behaving as if they're primitive, as if they don't know what is music. The music is so common these days. Yeah, Carla. Um, Carla, must thank you very much. Um, we only have a couple more minutes All left. Right, um, so thank Thanks you very much for your contribution. You're welcome. And uh, until next Monday, for sure. Bye thank bye. you. Enjoy. Uh, guys, um, we only have uh, three or so minutes left in the program. It, it's it's been so, um, can we take another one? Um, maybe we can take a, a one minute, one, a one and a half, yeah, one minute. Yes, go, go night caller, welcome to the police on the beat. You are the last caller for the night. We only have uh, another minute or so to go. Uh, good night, good night, gentlemen. Yes, good night, good night sir. Good night. Uh, sorry, Morgan, good night. Yeah, good night, you, sir. Inspector Providence and Corporal Cardon. Good night, good night. Good night, sir. Um, I'm Constable Smith and Stibbiton. Good night, good night, good night. Yeah. Well, I must say, you know, it's been a very wonderful program, very enlightening. But I, I just called to, on behalf of Commissioner John, to, to convey a commendation to, to you, Sergeant Morgan, and, and Inspector Providence, you know, for the contribution that you've made, um, you know, you know, over the years to the Police on the Beat program. I mean, both you gentlemen, you know, you have been host and, 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 and guests. And we really we're very happy that you you know you know you have been assisting us you know with this program. And you're looking forward, I mean, for your assistance in twenty eighteen and, and beyond. Inspector like, like, like a check like a check coming up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yes, sir, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah. And also I mean to to, to Corporal Corridor as, as well, you know, you know, you know, he's been doing a very good job. I mean, you know, you know, on and off the road. So I wish you guys all the best, and you know, you know, let's 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 you know, you know, take this program to to high heights as we move forward into 2018. Yeah, thank you, thank, thank you very much, sir. sir. And that okay. will be done for sure. All, yes. all right, good night and thanks. Good night, yes. sir. Okay. Yes, gentlemen, um, and the, the, the two young young gentlemen from from the public relations um, department who will be soon hosting. Um, it, it's it's sad that I couldn't get the, the chance really to um have them really in, in, in on the program. But they've been listening, they've been here. Enjoy and the time, man. always see this one hour thing, we, we need to buy some time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to buy some time. Yeah. Um, but we, we, we are almost at the end. Um, we have some wrapping up gentlemen. Uh, Corporal Carradon, do, do you? We're just doing some, some wrapping up. Also, I just want to take this time to for thanking the public for the suggestion. And I know my dear Inspector Providence have been listening and he will put things in place under the supervision of Superintendent John. I am asking persons that have suggestions that may not have the chance to call tonight. You can feel free, come to the traffic branch. You can either write it, put in a letter, drop it off for us, or you can come to the office of the, the inspector, right? that's Inspector Providence, and Superintendent John and voice your concerns. We are listening and we are hoping to get all opinions and vote for 2018 so that we can make our road safe. Thank you very much, Corporal. Um, Inspector Providence? Well, well, I just want to reinforce um, what the Corporal has said in regards to the general public and the assistance that we have been getting over the years. We want to really thank them, those who have contributed last year and we are endeavoring your support again for 2018. We recognize that it is difficult for us to police the whole of St. Vincent de Grenadines. It has to be a collaborative effort. I want to thank you and encourage you to continue to support the department, continue to support road safety, because that is what you're doing when you support the department. You're supporting road safety, road safety for all. <coughs> and I want to really thank those who have done that in 2017, and we're looking forward to for your support again in 2018. We also, at the department, we are hopeful for probably next week or the all in February that you're going to see the department out again and we're going to deal very swiftly and very forcefully with the whole issue of pedocyclists um, not wearing helmets 
and we see the issue of them riding in groups, going to beaches and, 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 and public holidays, weekends, and, how, and the manner in which they drove. So expect the police to be out, the traffic department to be out very forcefully. Um, all it is here to do with that very issue, so we just want to endeavor to just encourage and continue to give us your support. Yeah, thank you very much, Inspector. And you know, traffic matters are always one of the, the, the matters that is very ticklish, and there's, it's, it's just so wide. And there's so much to be spoken about. That's why I say I'm really at to buy Sometimes. another hour or so from, from <laughs> NBC Radio. But um, we have come to the end once again of the Police on the Beat program for yet another Monday night. Must thank the, the general public for making their contributions, um, making their suggestions, and also trying to get their queries answered. Remember that the On the Beat program comes to you on the auspices of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grandines Police Force and the Police Public Relations and Complaint Department. Tonight, uh, we had in studio Inspector Providence and Corporal Carradon from the Traffic Department. And also, two two gentlemen who didn't hear their voice um, except from, from the beginning, but um, they are members of the Public Relations and Complaints Department, and soon we'll be hearing them in full. That's uh, Constable Stapleton and Smith. Yes, so must say a pleasant good night uh, to all the persons who are listening to us in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and out there in the diaspora. And until next uh, Monday night, um, Sergeant Jules Morgan signing out yet again from the police uh, on the beat program. And we're going to march off, huh? left, right? Left, left, right. Left. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that the technician will fall asleep there. Yeah? No? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yes, good night. <laughs>